the project was identified as a safety concern. It was on the governor's list of 150 intersections slated for safety improvements. 70% of the crashes here are angle crashes and 60% of the crashes involve injuries. The existing intersection was a two-way stop with LED blinking stop signs. Previous improvements didn't reduce the crash rate enough to eliminate the angle crashes. The big thing was it's the first roundabout in Gallia County. Early on, the contractor approached us about partnering and doing a VECP to change the MOT, which was a big deal because it was going to have a red light and we had school that would delay buses. We've talked with the district on the project level and at the district ODOT personnel, and we thought that there would be a good opportunity for a VECP with the project to eliminate the traffic signals and maybe cut two or three weeks out of the project. And uh, we quickly got that approved and proceeded and everything went very smooth after that. We had about just over a year, about 54 weeks from the time of authorization until when the plans were filed uh, to do all the survey, design, environmental and acquisition for the project. And so that was a big challenge from the onset, which quickly became even more challenging. COVID has been very challenging for lots of groups and how you do work and how you plan work lots of delays in materials on projects shortage and some trucking which seems to be an ongoing problem but we was able through scheduling to be able to get through the project on time and in budget in the uh, professional world we were all still doing some virtual meetings pre-covid but for the public involvement and and even the stakeholder meeting side of things. Some of those folks weren't so used to doing technology and, and online meetings. The decision was made to do a pre-recorded meeting. You know, when you start the project, we didn't realize we would become video editors and narrators and directing a video and working with Alan to, to piece all that together and get that uploaded onto the uh, public information website. I think it was a success. The initial layout of the roundabout was located in the center of the existing intersection. We eventually shifted the location to the east. That allowed us to keep State Route 160 open during construction, which eliminated a detour for that route. The estimated road user cost of the detour was almost $10,000 a day. Uh, it also allowed for 70% of the roundabout to be built in one construction phase, which also reduced project costs. The roundabout is located in the unincorporated community of Porter. Uh, it's right in the center, so it creates a good looking and attractive feature in the middle of this community. We have a great relationship with Shelley. They work for us on a lot of jobs and everything always goes smooth. You ask them a question, they get right back with you. It's a very very good partnering. I would like to thank the District 10 personnel, I mean on the project and at the district level. They're always very forthcoming if you have an idea or if there's a problem, they're willing to work through it. Good partnering process with the district. Soon after we surveyed it, one of our surveyors came back and said thank you, uh, which uh, seemed a little odd, but he went on to explain that when he was a kid, him and his family were actually involved in a crash at this intersection. I think as designers, a lot of times we look at these, it's just a, a crash diagram and maybe don't think about the personal aspect that it has on families and, and, and people. These are projects that really are making a difference, reducing crashes, saving lives. And, and so that was just a reminder of the work we're doing and, and the importance of, uh, of what we're doing every day to the people of Ohio.